Time now for sports news on the news at 10. Lagos based football team Ikorodu United this evening recorded one of the biggest upsets in week 34 of the Nigeria Professional Football League when the bottom clubs stunned Heartland FC by a lone goal in Oere. Enugu Rangers returned to the top of the table after they beat another title contender, Rivers United, 4 0 at home to move to 54 points from 32 matches. Former champions Cano Pillars beat Sunshine Stars 2 0 to move to fifth. In other league results, Plateau United recorded a 1 0 win against Shooting Stars. Warrior Wolves beat Nasara United by same scoreline. Lobby Stars defeated defending champions Ayimba 1 0. The Nigeria Table Tennis Federation has picked 12 players for the final phase of the campaign of the campaign for the 2016 IWTF World Junior Championship in Cape Town, South Africa. 20 players were invited for a two-week campaign exercise that was coordinated by Africa's most decorated table tennis star, Shagun Toriola, at the National Training Center of the Lagos National Stadium. Toriola says that the players have proven their worth during the camp as most of them have improved their game with the aim of making the final list for the final phase of the campaign. After the final phase of the campaign, only eight players will be selected to represent Nigeria at the championship in November. Nico Rosberg has cut Lewis Hamilton's title lead to just two points after capitalizing on the Britain's poor start to win the Italian Grand Prix. Rosberg's seventh victory of the year, one more than his Mercedes teammate, was effectively secured at the start when Hamilton slumped to sixth place by the first corner. Hamilton did recover from his awful start to finish in second, ahead of Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel in third and Kimi Raikkonen in fourth. Firstly, look at this crowd. A big thank you to everyone for coming out. We, this is the best crowd we get all year. This is incredible. Um, it doesn't get any better. Take an applause. Well yeah. done. But um, yeah, obviously the start wasn't great, but it's still a great day for Mercedes Benz, and I'm proud to be a part of it. And in tennis world number one, Serena Williams says that she is feeling good after winning the 30th Grand Slam match. Serena, who is bidding to claim a record 23rd major and 7th US Open title, beats Sweden's Johanna Larsson 6-2, 6-1 to overtake Martina Maratidlova and uh, level with Roger Federer for most Grand Slam wins by a man or a woman. Um, actually, it was a really good feeling. I have to say it's a, it is actually a really good feeling. So um, to be up there with both men and women is something that's super rare, and it actually feels good. China's President Xi Jinping has asked leaders of the world's 20 largest economies to avoid empty talks as they look to quicken economic growth. World leaders are at the annual economic summit which has been hosted in China for the first time. President Xi said that the global economy was recovering but faced multiple challenges in finance and in trade. Also up for discussions are the global steel crisis the UK's Brexit talks and tax of multinationals like Apple. President Xi said that against risks and challenges facing the world economy, the international community has high expectations of the G20 in the 
Hanzu summit. Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe has criticized judges who gave permission for anti-government protests which later turns violent. He said the judges showed a reckless disregard for peace and warned that they should not dare to neglect to be neglected when making decisions. The opposition has accused him of trying to intimidate the judiciary. Opposition supporters are going to court on Monday to challenge a two-week ban on demonstrations. More stories outside of Nigeria now. Mother Teresa has been proclaimed a saint by Pope Francis in a ceremony at the Vatican. During her lifetime, she was revered for her work with the poor in India. Tens of thousands of pilgrims have flocked to St. Peter's Square for the Mass and that to be the canonization. In India, a special Mass was celebrated at the uh, Missionaries of Charity. The Tens of thousands of pilgrims packed into St. Peter's Square at the Vatican for a service to honor the woman who, when she was alive, was known as the Saint of the Gutter. During her life, she was known to have worked among the world's neediest in the slums of the Indian city now called Kolkata and became one of the most recognizable faces of the 20th century. <laughs> A Nobel Peace Prize laureate, a legacy complements Pope Francis' vision of a humble church that strives to serve the poor, and the festivities in Ahana are a highlight of his holy year of mercy, which runs until November the 8th. He's credited with healing an Indian woman from stomach cancer in 1998 and a Brazilian man from a brain infection in 2008. Without second thoughts, Standing on a canvas hung from St. Peter's Ballistica, showing the late nun in her blue-hemmed white robes, Pope Francis said she was a dispenser of divine mercy and held world powers to account for the crimes of poverty they created. Around 120,000 people attended the ceremony, according to the Vatican estimates. Celebrating the life of a woman who the Pope said might be difficult to call saint, as people felt so close to her, they spontaneously used mother. And the main news again. Suspected Boko Haram militants today struck a village in southeastern Niger Republic, killing five people. The assailants rode into the community on camels at night before opening fire on the residents who live close to the border with Nigeria. Also in the early hours of today, Rotemi Akiridolu, former president of the Nigeria Bar Association, emerged the candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the November 26th governorship elections in Ondo State. He polled 669 votes in the primaries to defeat his closest rival, Shegun Abraham, who scored 635 votes. And that's how it's been on the News at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for being a part of it. On behalf of everyone here, have a splendid night rest and a beautiful week ahead. Good night. It's Channels Television, celebrating 21 years of professional broadcasting.